and welcome to the Made by Mumino podcast. My name is Catherine and today is Thursday the 28th of March and I'm coming to you from the far western side of Germany, um, not far from Dusseldorf and near the Dutch border. So uh, it's a rather grey and gloomy day today but a bit of knitting chat always brightens it up. I've put some tulips behind there as well just for, just for a bit of cheerful interest. Um, we're really spoiled in this part of the world because because we live so close to the Dutch border, I think. Um, there's a wide array and variety and of uh, tulips available from very early on in the season. So I even have a special tulip vase. It's got like a, a rippled edge. And I think it's so that the tulips can kind of fall into the different, um, I don't know, little alcoves in the top of the, the vase so they can fall naturally. Um, so... Yeah, I love my tulips. They're happy flowers. Very happy flowers. So yes, welcome. If you're uh, if you're a new viewer, thank you so much for clicking on me and choosing to spend a little bit of time with me. And welcome back if you're a returning viewer. Thank you so much for your comments on the last videos. Um, it's it's really lovely to have these little mini chats with people all over the world and uh, interact with other crafters really really enjoyed that so thank you so much for your likes and comments and subscriptions subscribe whatever you want to call it um i really really appreciate it and i really enjoy it so uh, get a real kick out of it so thank you so much for that <clears throat> excuse me so let's kick off with what i'm wearing today i thought i'd pull something spring-like out of the uh, wardrobe even though it's not really uh, looking very spring-like today with persistent drizzle um, but this is this is my yakka sweater that I made a couple of years ago um, this is a pattern by Isabel Kramer it's a round yoke construction with a really pretty really pretty lace design I've got some pictures of me wearing it I think so I'll put them I'll insert them in to save me from standing up I have really bad knees it's you know I make noises when I stand <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I really love this this um, jumper. I tend to wear it over dresses, or in this case today, I'm wearing it over a vest top with a long skirt. Um, it's made of Titus. Uh, I think it's an alpaca blend from Bar Ramu. I'm pretty sure that it's not manufactured anymore, um, but I might be wrong. I'll do a bit of research and uh, if relevant, I'll put the, the link down below, but I'm pretty sure it's not made anymore. It's not the softest of alpacas, I must admit. It's a little bit prickly for me on bare skin. Like I said, I normally wear it over a dress, <clears throat> but today I'm wearing it over a vest top. Um, and I am feeling a little bit of a prickle on my arms, I must admit, and I, I, I don't usually have a problem with normal um, sheep wool. But I do find alpaca a little bit prickly sometimes. But I love the jumper, I really, really love it. I, I tend to... Um, overestimate what size I need. <laughs> so I think I knit this yoke about three times, definitely twice, definitely twice and ripped out, but possibly three times. Um, and I think this was the first ever lace construction that I did, a uh, lace um, pullover that I, that I made. Um, but I loved it, I absolutely loved it. And as soon as I'd finished making it, I was looking for other things, shawls and, and so on to make because one of the things that really attracts me to to knitting is the fact that you've got to focus, you've got to concentrate on what you're doing. It's very meditative, it's very repetitive. But then when you add in lace work or colour work or cables or, or whatever, it it really forces you to be mindful about what you're doing and what you're what you're creating. And you have to look at your pattern or you have to be aware of where you are in, in the pattern. And I really find that process a very, very meditative and soothing, as I'm sure most of you do as well. I really enjoy it. So yes, this is um, a really easy to wear sweater. I love Isabel Kramer's patterns. She makes such um, simple to follow, easy to wear, well-constructed patterns. I've made several of her, her, her garments over the years and uh, I can't recommend them highly enough. So yeah, um, as I said, I, did I mention? I'll put in a picture of me wearing it if I didn't already say that. So yes, that's what I'm wearing today. Lovely spring color for a not so spring day. 
<laughs> okay, so finished objects. I have one finished object. You probably remember for the last couple of uh, episodes I've been talking about this. This is the dotted rays shawl from Stephen West. And I love it. It had its first outing yesterday. This is made with Bird Street yarn in the colourway Merlin and it's a sock base so it's 25% nylon and 75% BFL and it's gorgeous. It's a really simple pattern, garter stitch, short rows, yarn overs, happy days. Really easy to wear, nice and nice and drapey, good for the spring. So um, yeah, yesterday I decided, hmm, I don't have an Easter egg. I, I, I like to find a, a, a Cadbury's Easter egg. I'm British and kind of like the go-to um, uh, chocolate for us is, is, for most people anyway, is Cadbury's in the UK. And in Germany, it's not really so easy to get hold of, especially after Brexit. And I thought, no, I won't order one from the UK this year. This is about a month ago. I'll be good. <laughs> I'll be good. <laughs> I'll have a chocolate free Easter this year. My partner doesn't celebrate Easter anyway, because he's Orthodox, he's Greek. So their Easter is a lot later. Um, uh, so yeah, I didn't order an Easter egg from the UK. And then I felt <laughs> yesterday, the crushing disappointment of not having an Easter egg. And I remember there's a little um, there's a little British shop in uh, a town called Fenlo, just over the border in the Netherlands. Um, so yesterday afternoon, I jumped on a train and went and bought myself an Easter egg. Happy days. But anyway, I took this with me and I wore it, thinking maybe I'll to do some nice photographs of it, get my partner to meet me because he doesn't work too far away from there. Um, but, but it didn't happen. So I'll do some pictures over the weekend and insert them up here. If there's nothing here, it didn't happen. And I'll, and I'll put it on my Instagram at some point. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really, really happy with this. Really easy to, to make, um, really enjoyed it. Would definitely make another one. The only downside of this pattern is the bind off. Because as you can see, this is a good two meters, right? Maybe more. I haven't measured it if I'm honest but it's an I-cord bind off all the way. And I hate doing I-cord bind off. <laughs> I really hate it. I just find like, I'm really, I'm a process knitter. I, I like having the finished garments, don't get me wrong, um, finished accessories or whatever, but I'm very much a process knitter. And, it, oh God, it's so boring doing an I-cord bind off for two, or two plus meters. So yeah, but it's done and it's worth it. One thing I did do to make the I-cord bind off a little bit more stretchy was um, uh, I think Stephen West has a, a tutorial video about it. If, um, if I can find it, I'll link it below. But um, instead of at the beginning of every row just knitting the I-cord, every few rows, so I did it at the beginning of each of the, of the short row repeats, um, you knit that little eye cord three stitches twice. So you knit it and put it back onto the left needle and knit it again and continue as normal. And it just gives you a little bit extra stretch, a little bit extra give in the fabric. And it stops it, sometimes it can be a bit tight and I find that it can pucker a little bit, especially if you've got a garter stitch in the middle of the shawl um, and it just stops that from happening. So it sits much more smoothly. Maybe it's just me, but I find that it really helps. But yeah, I'm really enjoying this fabric. It was a delight to make. Lovely, squishy, garter, happy days. And this yarn was just beautiful. I'm pretty sure that Bird Street yarn is going to be at <clears throat> Wonderwool in April. And uh, I'm definitely going to go and have a look and maybe pick up a couple more skeins. But th this used pretty much three skeins. There's two sizes in this pattern. Um, and uh, the larger size, which is what I made, calls for three skeins of fingering weight yarn. And I think I had about 30 grams left from the third skein. So it definitely, it, it definitely does take, I mean, it, I suppose in theory, I could have just kept going a little bit longer just to use up that last little end. But, uh, but no, I'm happy with it. It's a good size. It's a really good size. So yeah, that is my first 
finished object. Well, only finished object. So next, whips. So oh, my tummy just rumbled. I'm hungry. I haven't had any breakfast yet. What time is it? 10 o'clock. Yeah, I really should eat. Never mind. Coffee. Coffee is the answer. So whips. Since the last time I spoke to you, I have got two new whips on the needles, both of which are test knits. So just to give you a little update, apologies for crackling. There's a little plastic uh, paper bag in here. Um, my Alden Woodcraft bag. I love this bag so much. I think I should get another one in a bigger size as well. I think she had an update recently. Yeah, because um, I think Alden Woodcraft did her first um, show maybe the East Anglia Yarn Festival. I've been watching a lot of YouTube podcasts from other other knitting podcasters about the East Anglia Yarn Festival and Unravel and they get a bit mixed up in my head. But I'm pretty sure she was at East Anglia Yarn Festival and then did a little shop update afterwards, which I then forgot about. I should go and check that out. But anyway, this is my Botanic Shawl. Another lovely design from Stephen West. And I've made a little bit of progress. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Getting in the right old. Oh no. Come on. Ah oh dear. Really should put things away more carefully. Right, there we go. So it is progressing, slowly but surely. I think I've done about from about there. Yes, that's right. Because the change the color changing yarn got very dark so i was having trouble knitting on it in the evenings so i focused on some of my other whips uh, instead um so that's right so i think i've done about that much since i last bowed you not very much my partner's still really happy with it i will get it finished by the end of may um and uh yeah it's just something that i can pick up but it's not very car knitting friendly and we've been doing quite a few trips and, and so on recently because it's two different colors and you're not working with both at the same time you, you leave the one color behind to knit up and down because it's mosaic knitting i tend to get in a little bit of a tangle when i'm doing it so um it's not fantastic for car knitting which i think is why this is not being looked at very much at the moment but i will finish it in the not too distant future. So yes, that's that. And I'm gonna make the bird's nest problem in here even worse by shoving it back in the bag. That's a problem for another day. <laughs> so yes, my botanic shawl from Stephen West. Okay, so that's that. That can go over there. Oh, uh, next, I have got, in fact, let's put that over there as well. Whips, so. The first one, I think I mentioned last time that I was waiting for the yarn or it had just arrived. I'm doing a test knit for John Arben. John Arben is a British yarn uh, mill and I think they're based down in Devon, so in the West Country, in the south of England, southwest of England. And they make a beautiful range of traditional rustic um, yarns in many different weights and uh, their yarn is beautiful. It's really, really lovely. I've used their sock yarn many times. It's brilliant for colour work because it's nice and toothy. So I've used their Exmoor sock uh, several times for, for colour work in, in, in jumpers and, and things and also cowls. So um, there was a call of a couple of months ago or a month or so ago because they produce um, a, um, what do they call it? The annual, they produce an annual with at least, I think it's eight patterns in every annual. And this is the fourth one that they're producing. And they put out a test call for people to test the patterns and preview the patterns that are in the uh, in the annual. And I signed up for a cowl designed by Marie Wallen um, to challenge myself because I've done stranded colour work uh, many times and for me the, the kind of boss level stranded colour work are designers like Marie Wallen who go for that uh, the traditional fair isle design and uh, yeah I just wanted to challenge myself um, using multiple different co multiple colours in a smallish project I thought it was perfect so 
this enormous bag. Oh, I bought this in Oslo and I forgot to talk about it. It's uh, from a company called Stricker Fieber. And it's beautiful. I think it's made with recycled um, uh, fabric from other projects because it feels, this one on the outside, it feels like a sort of a, a dress fabric. And then there's all sorts of bits of scraps on the inside. It's really beautiful, really lovely, very soft and quilted, loads of pockets inside. But yeah, anyway, this enormous bag <laughs> is housing a cowl. <laughs> So this is what I've done so far. Oh. And you're going to see this nest of ends. I've left my ends really long because I saw a technique for braiding ends on the inside for stranded colour work. I was thinking I might have a go at doing at doing that. So I've left my ends uh, nice and long so that I can have a go if I want to. So yes, this is the design so far. There are 14 different colours. I flip this over. There are 14 different colours. I think all of them have been used so far. I'm almost halfway, I think, or just over. Yeah, just at the halfway point. It's not a big cowl. It'll come in three sizes. This is the medium. The small one has got a slightly smaller circumference, but the long one is, is very long. Uh, the, the large one is, uh, is, um, is enough to wrap her in twice. But I knew that I wouldn't have time to do that. So I went with the medium one. I'm a bit concerned that the the ribbing seems to be flicking up a lot. So I think I might steam it and make sure that that's sitting nicely. Um, but it should be all right when it's when it's when it's blocked. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with this. Like I said, this yarn is the Harvest Hughes range from uh, from John Arban. And I actually did a little video of myself doing prep for this. So I do quite a lot of test knits. Well, whenever I can, I do test knits. And um, if you're interested in doing that, um, designers who are looking for test knitters are usually looking for a few things. One, that you're happy to share and promote your finished project and hopefully uh, the project as it's, as it's going along, unless it's a secret test knit. Secondly, they want you to um they want you to finish it on time <laughs> so that you can meet the deadline so that they can make any adjustments to the pattern and uh, and so on before the release date um and thirdly they want notes they don't necessarily want you to check for mistakes although that does happen sometimes most uh especially for the bigger designers they do have really good tech editors. So it's not really a question of looking for mistakes. It's a question for looking for your feedback, how you get on with the pattern, whether or not you'd knit it again, uh, if your yarn choice was suitable, if you're able to get the same gauge. But what they're most interested in a lot of the time is how much yarn you use, because we've all got such different gauges and knitting styles. If they say in the pattern, you need uh, 400 grams of I don't know, some indie dyed yarn or like Bird Street yarn or whatever. That's pretty pricey. I mean, you're talking at least 20 euros per skein for, uh, for, for, for a, an indie dyed yarn. And they need to make sure that they're recommending the, the correct amounts to, to the people buying the patterns. Because it is frustrating when you're preparing to start a pattern and uh, then you end up with a whole skein left over or you only use a tiny bit or, or whatever. So, so that's what they're looking for. They're looking for your feedback, how you enjoyed the pattern and how much you use, how much yarn you use. So I made a little video of myself prepping for this because there's so many different colors in it. All of the skeins needed to be caked up and weighed. So this is one of the skeins. How gorgeous is that? So this is the Harvest Hughes color, um, uh, base from uh, X. Oh my goodness, what's wrong with me? I cannot talk today. One second. Right, apologies for that. I dropped the little ball of yarn and it went under the sofa and it went all the way under the sofa, underneath the shelves behind the sofa. Anyway, so I have it back. <laughs> So before I, before I had to go on a little adventure, this is the John Arban Harvest Hughes range. 
and it's beautifully heathered. It's absolutely gorgeous. I think they do this in a few different weights. This is the four ply one, as I said, but I'm pretty sure that they also do a DK weight, possibly even a worsted weight as well in the same color ranges. And it's gorgeous. These little skeins are uh, 25 gram skeins and it's about 100 meters per 25 grams. So a proper, proper traditional four ply. And this is made of 33% BFL, 33% uh, Falklands Merino, and 33% uh, Svartblas. So, oh, and thank you to the person who told me how to pronounce that properly. I hope I did a better job that time. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Really lovely. So that's, that's the wood sorrel colorway. Let's find another one for you so you can get an idea of what they look like. Da, da, da. Okay, here's another one for you. This one is Speedwell. That is just delicious, isn't it? I think I need a, a whole jumper in that colour. That's beautiful. Hmm. I know these guys are going to be at the um, yarn show that I'm going to in April as well. They're going to be at Wonderwall too. Hmm. I might have to get a slighter quantity of that. Anywho, distracted. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yes, this great big, great big um, project bag is housing that. Um, because I've also got, uh, so as I said, this pattern called for 14 colours. And as the price starts to rack up a little bit when you're buying 25 gram skeins, um, even with the really generous discount that they gave for people doing the, the test netting. So I try to sub in some of my four ply um, yarns where I already had them. So I'm using a variety of woolly knit combs. This is the colour chestnut. I love these. I love these combs so much. I've used them so many times over the years. This one is, I think, called Autumn Glow. This one, Cinnamon Brown. I'll talk about this colour a bit more shortly when it comes to future knitting plans. That one, I love that colour so much. So yes, I've got a big variety of different uh, colours here, but at the uh, end of this podcast, I'll insert the footage of me preparing for the um, for the test net. So you can see all of the colours in more detail then. So yeah, that is my colour work cowl designed by Marie Wallen for John Arben. Really, really nice. So hopefully by the next time I speak to you, this will be finished. Um, but yeah, so that's that. Okay, so this can go away. And that can go down on the floor. I'll talk to you about the next one. Okay, so the second test knit that I'm doing is a, a an absolutely uh, unexpected but gorgeous jumper. So this is the Utori sweater from Kadri Knits or Kadri Knits. And Kadri or Sabina uh, put out a task call for this. I think it was at the beginning of this week. And it is a beautiful, almost like a crochet fabric design. And I saw it and I thought, ooh, I've got some yarn for that. So last year um, I started, um, I ordered some of the um, organic, not organic, the ethical silk from uh, Knitting for Olive um, in their really dark, almost black colourway, intending to make um, a summer weight jumper out of it. And for some reason, I thought that that would the lento would be suitable for that, which I think is made on six millimeter needles. And this is a like a skinny four ply. That's this yarn here. And I started knitting it and I got all the way down to the ribbing and I kept telling myself, oh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. You'll love it when it's finished. Love it when it's finished. But, you know, we should listen to ourselves when we are thinking, 
I'm not sure about this. I'm really not sure about this. Because I then put the, the, uh, the half finished sweater into a bag where it sat and hibernated for, well, from, from that time until now. Sorry, excuse me, I just needed to sneeze. So this is what's left now of the, that Lento. I just I wanted a nice sweater to wear over best tops in the summer or just to throw on over a dress in the summer I wanted something that was nice and open <sighs> yeah I just I, I didn't quite like it I love the feel of it it's gorgeous really beautiful how luxurious to have a, a, a sweater made in silk I mean that, that's that's pretty special so it needed to be the right pattern and this was not it. So instead of frogging this, I decided to knit directly from it. And holding that double, I have started to make, as I said, the Utori sweater from Kedri. And it's beautiful, it's really lovely. So I'm test knitting that for her and I've made a pretty good start. So it starts at the back. and you knit across the back and then pick up for the front panels. And I'm just on the right side now to pick to pick up. So I am super happy with this. I think it looks beautiful. I try and hold this up a bit close to the camera. How gorgeous is that? Beautiful stitch definition. And it really does have a sort of um, a crochet vibe. I'm, I think I used to have a jumper really similar to this in the 90s. So one of the places I lived when I was a kid, my dad was in the military, so we moved around a lot. It was down near Glastonbury in the United Kingdom. And it will come as no surprise that during the 80s and 90s and previous to that, I presume, there's a bit of a hippie vibe. So I lived in tie dye dresses, crochet jumpers, baggy, you know, do you remember those hats that everyone used to wear? I'll try and find a picture and put one up here. But yeah, lots of that kind of thing. And I'm pretty sure I had a, a jump, a crochet jumper in cream that was not dissimilar to this, that had tassels. Anyway, I digress. So, <laughs> so I'm loving this. I think I cast this on the day before yesterday and I can't put it down. I'm totally addicted to this. And, um, and yeah, I want to wear this. Not only am I enjoying the process of making it, it's a really nice pattern. It's nice and easy to follow. My only criticism is that there isn't a chart, but then I was thinking about it uh, and for the size, the size range that she's got, because it's very size inclusive, I think it would be about 80 pages long with all of the charts. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's gorgeous. I, I love the feel of the fabric. I don't think it's going to be too heavy. I think it's going to use quite a few uh, of the balls the of, of, uh, of knitting for Olive. So the yarn that Sabina or Kedri uses is, um, yeah, Pasquale Camel DK, which I do actually really want to use, but I also knew that I wanted it in this silk as well. So I think I might order some of this anyway, because um, Kedri very, very kindly uh, gave us a discount code for, for the test knitters to, for this specific yarn. So I think I might order some anyway and tuck it away and make another one for the autumn. That color is just divine as well. I absolutely love it. Really gorgeous. So yeah, that's going really nicely. So far, so good, no problems. And um, I imagine this will be quite a quick knit. I think the deadline for this is something like the 19th of April. So today's the 28th. So that's, that's a good, it's more than two weeks, nearly, yeah, three weeks, um, which is plenty of time to do this. So yeah, this is living in this Moomin bag. How lush is that? <laughs> I don't know if I've ever talked about why my podcast and why my username on everything is Moomino. I love Moomins. If you haven't come across Moomins, they're these little chaps. It's a kid's storybook. When I was in primary school, I had a primary school teacher called Mr. Ladd who uh, who read The Hobbit to the class every year. I think, oh, how old would I have been? About eight, maybe? Eight years old? Something like that. So anyway, he read The Hobbit to the class, but he also read all the Moomins books to the class. 
and um, I love them ever since. And he used to do the, as, these illustrations to decorate the classroom with. I absolutely love them. So you probably see behind me, there's a few Moomin related bits and, bot, bot, uh, bits and bobs about the place, which is one of the other reasons I really, really, really want to go to Finland because there's a little theme park there for Moomins. I went to one in Japan years ago um, when I lived in Asia. <clears throat> Um, but I kind of want to go to the OG uh, theme park in, uh, I'm sure it's just for kids though. I'm sure I'll get there and I feel really silly. <laughs> I love movements. They're so cute. They're really, really cute. No. So, excuse me. I had to sneeze again. I'm very sorry. I don't know what's going on. It must be the alpaca. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, I love all things movement. Although this bag... I have to admit, it was a bit of a disappointment. I won't put the details below of, of where I got it from. Um, I got it from a seller on Etsy and it was advertised as handmade and came with a massive sticker on it, little label uh, that said, made in People's Republic of China and it smelled of chemicals. And I was really upset about it because um, you don't really expect that. Well, I don't really expect that from Etsy, but, but anyway. So yes, that's living in this bag, which is very roomy. It's not really a project bag in fairness, that the opening is a bit too small, but it's too delightful not to use. So that is my um, Utori sweater beginnings from Kerdry. And I'll keep you updated. But I'm pretty sure that this is not going to be long on the needles before I'm enjoying wearing it. Okay, so let's put that back in the bag. So the, as the, it's got quite a short deadline on the uh, test net, I imagine there'll be quite a short turnaround on the pattern as well for her releasing that. So um, keep an eye on uh, on Instagram uh, for that if you're interested in the pattern. So, so yeah. Right, so what else have I been doing? That's all my whips for now. Acquisitions, I suppose. So uh, last Friday, I was messaging with one of my brothers and because I knew that he and his wife were expecting to go to Brussels. So my my youngest brother is a, is a, a solicitor, a lawyer, and uh, his wife is a university lecturer. And she often teaches in uh, a university over in Brussels. I knew that they were due for another trip over. So I thought I'd just message them to find out when it was. Turns out they were already there. So I was like, Haha, do you have any time to see us? Because I go through phases I don't know if any of you live a long way from um, kith and kin as well, but I tend to find after about three months of not seeing my friends and family from back home, I start to get really homesick and it makes it, especially at this time of year when we're coming up to Easter and usually there'll be like a family get together or something like that. And it's just, I do find it a little bit little bit challenging sometimes and I do get quite homesick occasionally hence the trip to go and try and find an easter egg uh, so when I heard that my little brother was was only two hours away from me um, I uh, spoke to my partner I said are you up for a little day trip <laughs> so we went last Saturday to Brussels to uh, to go and meet up with them so she, uh, my sister-in-law was uh, teaching in the in the morning and uh, up until just after lunch. So uh, my partner and I had a lovely couple of hours hanging out in a little cafe next to where my sister-in-law was teaching and catching up with him and getting to hear about what they're up to and life plans and all that kind of thing. It was really, oh, it was, it was a tonic. It was so wonderful to make that connection with somebody from back home. Absolutely wonderful. And uh, and then when my uh, sister-in-law had finished teaching, we uh, took them uh, out for, or we went out for lunch and we stayed in a little sort of shawarma type place for probably about two hours, just chatting and um, catching up. And oh, it was just, it was just really, really lovely. Uh, really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, I, I do. I do get quite homesick, so it was lovely to to be able to make that contact. So um, yeah, so my tummy keeps rumbling. I'm really hungry. <laughs> I'm so sorry if you can hear it. I should eat before podcasting. I should go and have a banana or something. Anyway. So yeah, 
I didn't do any sightseeing or anything, but I couldn't resist. While we were driving down there, I was finishing off my um, uh, shawl, my dotted race shawl in the car. Uh, but also had, took the opportunity to Google local yarn shops. Because honestly, I've never, even though we live very close, I've never been to Brussels before. I've been to the, the airport a few times when I was changing airplanes, um, going back to the UK from when I used to live over in Asia. But I've never explored Brussels at all. It's beautiful. It's absolutely stunning. The buildings there are incredible. Um, it's it's just it's a romantic with a capital R, as in that time period, uh, masterpiece. It's absolutely beautiful. We definitely need to go back there for a weekend. But anyway, whilst we were driving there, I started googling yarn shops because why wouldn't you? It'd be rude not to. You know, you should go and support local businesses wherever you're going. And uh, I found a gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous yarn shop just outside Brussels called Sip and Knit. And I think I put a picture of it on my, on my Instagram, but I'll put some footage in here. So as you can see, they've got an absolutely fantastic range of yarns. There was there were so many brands there I'd never heard of. Um, there was uh, some French yarns, some Belgian yarns. They have the full range of um, wool dreamers. It's all the manchalope and all that kind of thing. Uh, some things I'd seen before because they were German yarns. Um, but yeah, it was, oh, I could have bought that entire shop. And the owner, whose name I cannot remember, was so welcoming and lovely and she talked to me about all of the yarns and um she was telling me about like where they were dyed and how they were dyed she she was so knowledgeable about about her stock and it was it's such a lovely shop to go to even though i do not need any more yarn <laughs> i have an embarrassingly large stash i bought some yarn <laughs> so this is Lana More, I think is how you pronounce it. It's coming across quite peach there. It's not that peach. I think it's the light. It's a really gorgeous soft pink colour. Is that better? No, nope. it's blowing out. It might be the contrast with my jumper as well. If I go out of the screen. No, I can't, I can't make that. It this is oh, it's gorgeous. You see the different colours in there the lighter bits because of the linen. So this is their Iris range, Iris, and it's 50% baby alpaca, 25% silk and 25% linen. And check out the drape on that. Oh, it's beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. I'll put in a picture up here as well because the, 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 it's not showing up as the right colour on the screen at all. Absolutely gorgeous. I could not resist. So I was thinking I'd make a little single skein shawl, maybe a Sophie scarf, something like that with this. Um, but until then, I'm just going to sit and hold it because it's beautiful and I love it. And I wish I'd bought all of the skeins. Never mind. Next time. It's really beautiful. It's lovely. So pink. I love pink. See, I am. This is not the right colour. Never mind. So I bought that. They also had a fantastic selection of books there as well and as I think I mentioned before I can't resist books they're just so beautiful to look at so I picked this up Lakeside Stitches oh, it's beautiful so beautiful gentle knits from the north so I picked it up because I showed the front cover to my partner so as you may remember last in the last episode on my trip to Norway, I bought a sweater quantity of yarn to make a colourwork sweater in Oslo. And uh, I still haven't decided what pattern I'm going to use. 
I showed that to my partner and he was like, oh, I really like that. So he's not sure about the, the pointy bits underneath, the, the, the triangle element, but he really likes that yoke. So I thought, do you know what? This is for the right weight. So, uh, so yeah, uh, this could be a definite contender, but it's just so beautiful. Look at that. Oh, no. Try again. Whoop. Look at that. Gorgeous. Oh no, there's no pattern details on that. That's fine. It's just the needles and the gauge and so on. Absolutely gorgeous. It was the other pattern I was really attracted to as well. There was a slip. Oh yeah, that the slip over. How beautiful is that? So yeah, I couldn't resist. This one too. Really beautiful. I know lots of people, not lots of other podcasters, have been talking about this uh, book. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love the description of a few different techniques that she's got at the beginning as well. It's it's just a lovely, lovely book. It's beautifully photographed. It's um. It's just really nicely presented. It feels nice as well. So yeah, the designer, Ronya Hakaleto. Absolutely gorgeous. Also, I like that it's not a massive book as well. It's, uh, you know, as in wide, it's just really beautiful. So yes, this is joined the book collection. So there we go. Whilst I was there, I also picked up, they had all of the knitting barber range there as well. I hope this is the right tin, yes it is. I picked up one of the bracelet measuring tapes. How cool is that? I think it comes in several sizes and this is almost the biggest size, but my intention is not to wear this as a bracelet, but to wear this as a, a shawl tie to keep shawls in place. I love that, it's really cool, really cool. I had seen it before, but, I, but not in person. So um, yeah. I also picked up some little embroidery scissors as well because you can never have too many little pairs of scissors. The other day when I was making that video or well, making the video to um, uh, for my test knit prep, I was searching high and low for my little embroidery scissors. You know, the standard ones we all have, these little ones. Could not find them anywhere. I always keep them in my little notions pouch that goes in my main project bag, whatever I'm working on at the moment. Searched them there twice. Couldn't find it anywhere. Fine, whatever got out some larger fabric scissors that I had, uh, that I've got, used those instead. Sat down to do some knitting. These were in the notions pouch where I'd already looked twice. Oh my God. So I got another pair of scissors. <laughs> because why, why not? Why not? So, uh, so yes. So these were my very naughty acquisitions. Is it Martin of Knit365? He always does it like a little thumbnail thing. He always, he makes me laugh, he cracks me up. I find it quite difficult to watch his podcast sometimes because he's based in Cardiff, or he's, he's I think he's more over towards Penarth, but anyway, it's where I grew up, uh, it's, it's where I was born, and particularly when I'm feeling a bit homesick, like I remember just before Christmas in Vlogmas a couple of years ago, he went round at John Lewis, which is a department store in Cardiff, Oh my goodness, I think, oh, I couldn't go home that year, I think as well, because of lockdown. There was still travel restrictions in place between Germany and the UK. I couldn't watch it. I couldn't watch it. My heart, oh my goodness, I'm so homesick. Anyway, yes, in honour of Martin of Knit365. <laughs> he does make me chuckle though. I do enjoy his podcast. <laughs> so yeah, the other thing that I picked up, or picked up my life, this week was, as I think I mentioned before, this is sewing by the way. So if you're not interested, skip on to knitting plans because I'm gonna talk about sewing for two minutes. Uh, I am doing a preview make, a make and share for Tauco magazine, as I've done for them a couple of times before. Um, I can't share the exact details um, because uh, it's secret until the release of the, or till the publication of the magazine for this issue. But I can tell you that it is a blouse that I'm making. It's a trapeze shape, but I'm going to probably convert it to be a shirt dress. 
rather than a blouse. Um, so I treated myself. I'm looking over here because I can't believe how beautiful this is. I treated myself to this linen from Merchant and Mills. If you are not familiar with Merchant and Mills, they are a company that makes their own sewing patterns, uh, but they also source the most gorgeous fabric from all over the world. It's usually sustainable, it's usually environmental or organic or biological, or whatever you want to call it in some way, shape or form. And they're based down in uh, Rye on the south coast of the UK, south coast of England. And I was looking around for fabric to make uh, what I had in my head when I when I uh, signed up to do this pattern and I saw this and I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't not buy it it stayed in my basket for a couple of days I think before I plucked up the courage because if you know Merchant Mills it's not the cheapest fabric in the world it was it was a decision it was a conscious decision but oh my goodness how beautiful is that I believe this is called the Louisiana linen and so I have three and a half meters of this. And I think I'll probably start cutting out this afternoon. Um, because I, I, I think I've mentioned before, I, ha I live in quite a, um, a cozy, shall we say, flat with my partner. And when I'm sewing, I need the room. <laughs> the dining room table uh, is not big, but it's where I have to do everything. And I then take up all of the space with all of the things that I need for my sewing project. So I think I'll probably try and do the cutting out today because my partner is going to be at home for the bank holidays on Friday and Monday. So yes, this is happening. Oh, it's too beautiful. I could make a shawl to go. Oh, hmm. Yes, yes, that's happening. Maybe I need to get some more skeins of this. Make a little cardigan. Anyway, so sewing plans for over the... Easter weekend, I think. That's there. And finally, I would like to talk about future knitting plans. So I'm. this is one of my colours for one of the test knits that I'm doing, the, uh, the John Arbin test knit that I'm doing. And as I said, this is cinnamon brown and it's one of the woolly knit cones. Well, I also have a cone. This is a hank. So this is a 200 gram hank and it's gorgeous. This is a colour that will go with a lot of things that I wear. <clears throat> and uh, and I think I would really, really enjoy wearing this. And I've got this really strong urge to make a cardigan. I've been thinking about it for the last few weeks. I was going to cast it on this week, but then the other test knit from Kedri came up. So I put it on hold. But as I've bought another book, I kind of have to do a pattern from one of my books that I already have. That's the rule. So I'm going to do a pattern from this book. This is a liner book. And thank you to the Finnish person who reached out, told me that liner is the correct pronunciation for people in Finland for, for that magazine. <clears throat> and this is by, uh, this is a book from uh, Paula Pereira, Pereira. I think she's Portuguese. And it's the textured knits book. Oh, it's just so gorgeous. I would like to knit everything from this book, but what I'm going to knit is this cardigan. I've got a, a, a desire to have um, a cardigan that is open at the front, so no buttons, a small amount of cable detailing, and uh, it's knit top down so that I can get the length to exactly what I want. So I've got, I think this fits the bill 100%. I'm pretty sure this, this is Staria. I'm pretty sure this is available as a single download pattern on Ravelry as well, if you don't want to get the book. Um, but yes, I think that's what I'm going to be doing with this yarn held double. So th the pattern calls for a DK, I believe. Do, do, do. Where is it? There it is. So it calls for, oh, it's for a worsted weight. So I'm gonna try and get gauge with this held double. If I can't do that, I do have some um, 
matching mohair that I picked up, some knitting for olive um, mohair in the in a, in a matching colourway. It's really, really similar. I think it's like cognac, I think is the colourway. So if I can't get gauge with this hull double, I'll, I'll put that in as well, just to make it up. But yeah, that's that's my future knitting plans. Yes, that's all I wanted to talk about today. So thank you so much for choosing to spend your time with me uh, today. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful weekend that's full of crafting. And uh, please let me know in the comments what you're working on at the moment. I love to hear about it and it gives me some inspiration as well. And if you have any ideas about what to do with this little gorgeousness, feel free to let me know as well. Although I think I'll probably just want to look at it for a bit longer if I'm honest. So yes, have a wonderful weekend. I think this will probably go up on Saturday or Sunday. So um, yeah, have a wonderful weekend and I will speak to you all in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Bye.